Take a walk down Tremont Street and the marquees signal the return of live shows. But our audience is coming. Box Center President Joe Spalding. We have Billy Strings, who was Entertainer of the Year in Bluegrass, sold out. We have Bob Dylan, sold out. We have Ringo Starr and the Abbott Brothers, sold out. It's been proven that we're being able to sell out these shows this fall, which means people are ready to come back. The Huntington Theater is hoping you'll come back to check out a new take on a classic tale that we'd love to talk about if we could get past the name. It's called Teenage... Is it okay to say that? It's Richard the Third, And in this version, a high school student who's been bullied has is wreaking revenge on his tormentors. Actor and BU grad Greg Mazgala commissioned the play and performs the lead role. We caught up with him on Zoom to get the story behind the story. In 2012, I, I started a theater company um, called The Apathite in an effort to bring more thoughtful narratives around the disabled experience to wider audiences. One of the first ideas was an adaptation of Richard III. I figured since he is arguably the most famous disabled character in Western dramatic literature. Tell us about your personal connection uh, to this character. I uh, was born disabled. I have cerebral palsy. One of the main reasons for starting my company was because of what we have uh, all these incredible narratives that are out there, but we only see a very small slice of those stories. And I thought theater is an incredible art form to kind of share that because you are asking people to show up in real time, have a common experience, and deal with people's actual bodies, actual physicality. Because if you can do it on stage, you can you can maybe do that better in life. So you're probably biased here, but what do you think about Teenage Richard? It's so weird that we can't say the name. <laughs> it deals with politics, it deals with uh, ableism, it deals with a whole host of issues, and is also incredibly entertaining. So Clarissa, we're senior class president. Oh, uh, actually has uh, two disabled characters in it. So you get to see uh, people in relationship with each other. Despite its title, or maybe because of its title, you know, uh, come and take a look. You know, we'd love to see you at the theater and, and share this story with you. It's not just theaters that are looking to reconnect with their audiences in person. Museums and galleries around the Commonwealth are anxious to treat you to more than a virtual tour. That's the case here at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Boston, where the 2021 Foster Prize winners are now on display. This is a biannual exhibition that the ICA has been organizing since 1999, when Audrey and James Foster first endowed the prize. The curator is tasked with the job to scour local talent, to do studio visits with artists, and to really bring forward who they think are the most exciting artists that are in the Boston area. This year, three artists were recipients of the prize, Delmarie Hamilton, Eben Haynes, and Marlon Forrester. I am a artist and arts educator. My show here is uh, If Black Saints Could Fly 23. The viewer, uh, when they approach the painting, they see an all over pattern uh, that's derived from the basketball courts. These uh, kind of interwoven patterns that go through the figure. These figures are of all black males. With titles like Trayvon George, current social issues are embedded in the work and integrated with subtle shout outs to Forrest's sports idol, Michael Jordan, and the 23 pairs of chromosomes which unite humans. There are also signs of his Guyanese heritage, though Boston is the place he calls home. I'm from Boston, I'm raised in Dorchester, and this is just really like a homecoming. It's an opportunity for friends and family who live in the Boston area to see the work that I've been doing. It's also an opportunity for my students to see that they have the capacity to set a high bar for themselves. Art is a vehicle for change, and ICA is a great place uh, to come to, um, to embrace that idea. And Evan Haynes, you saw the name, uh, is another Foster Prize winner. You may remember him from a recent Chronicle episode. His Shelter in Place gallery went viral mm. during the pandemic. It was a miniature yes. art gallery yes. he curated at his home. That is so cool. All right, and everyone should know that the ICA does require masks at all time. And the Huntington, Huntington Theater is asking everyone to be show proof of vaccination and or a negative COVID test for attendance. But bottom line, any venue that you're going mm -hmm. to, make sure you check to find out what their requirements are. Up next, a new approach to opera.